In today's video, I'll be showing you how I designed and painted this armor for my custom Mando build. I started this project with this custom helmet that I made in my last video. The next thing I needed to do was figure out what chest armor and pauldron combination would look best to highlight some of the strong attributes of this helmet and pair it nicely with them. Alter Ego Armory, the designer of this helmet, recently came out with this chest armor on his Etsy shop and I figured it would be the perfect complement for this helmet. The pauldrons were designed based on Garth Saxon's pauldrons from the final season of The Clone Wars, but I added additional raised detailing to them to make them more unique. Once I decided on all the armor pieces, it was time to send them off to my slicing software to send them off to the 3D printer to be made. 3D printed pieces have distinct layer lines that are inherent with the 3D printing process. So to make anything smooth like this, you need to fill them and sand them off. I started this by cleaning up all of the edges with my rotary tool. Then I spread polyester resin across the entire surface of the chest armor. And I mixed acetone with Bondo spot putty for the shoulders, since it would be getting in some of the internal details and it would be easier to remove than the polyester resin. Each piece was sanded once it was filled, then given a coat of gray primer and sanded again. This gave them a perfectly smooth finish after several passes that removed all of the layer lines. After each piece was primed, a layer of gloss black spray paint was added over every piece. This makes an excellent base for the chrome paint that was going to be applied. For the chrome, I used all clad chrome through an airbrush and sprayed all clad clear coat over top of everything. Be sure to cover every inch of the piece that you've sprayed chrome with the clear coat or else any future layer of paint will have a bad reaction. While the chrome paint and clear coat dried, I loaded up Autodesk Sketchbook, which is my preferred drawing app that I have on my computer. I imported pictures of my helmet, chest, and shoulders, traced the outlines, and used that to experiment with different color schemes until I found one that I liked. This scheme was chosen with a stripe down the middle, or down the side rather, white abdomen, blue chest, chrome shoulders with blue fringing. Once the paint had fully cured overnight and I decided on a color scheme, it was time to start masking off the areas that would remain chrome. The areas that would remain chrome are this stripe, the main shoulders, and any battle damage that you see. The battle damage was added with liquid latex and applied with a Q-tip or a thin brush, depending on the size of the damage I wanted. The damage is added randomly, but in a way that makes sense. So anywhere that would receive heavy damage or where from rubbing would, like the bottom here, or these areas by the shoulder would receive extra damage. But areas towards the center and around here wouldn't receive much damage. So unless there's a blaster mark, they would be left more or less intact.
everything was masked, a layer of Krylon gray primer was added over every piece. Unfortunately, the chest armor, I hadn't gotten a full coverage with the clear coat, as mentioned before, so there was a paint reaction that caused the primer to bubble. This required me to sand it all the way back to the original layers of resin and start over from scratch. This added about two days of extra work to my project, but could have been fixed with 30 seconds of uh, more care with the airbrush. But once every other part had cured with the primer, I could then add all of the main colors, like the blue, white, to them. And then remove the tape and masking fluid to reveal the damage and the color blocking. Duct tape was used on the shoulder armor to remove the masking fluid, since the, the Krylon paint dried relatively hard and was hard to remove by hand. Then, a thin black paint was applied over the entire surface and wiped up in areas to give it a weathered look. Then, using a sand colored paint, Paint was speckled over the entire surface to make it look like it had been splashed with mud and then removed. After three days, the chest armor was ready for paint once again. This time I made sure I put three coats of clear coat on to make sure there would be no issues again and everything went flawlessly this time. After the paint was, was chipped and removed from this, the same black, thin black paint was applied over the entire surface of the chest and the abdomen. I used my helmet and helmet making video as reference for how to weather this piece. I wanted each piece to look like they shared a backstory and share weathering elements. It was important that they look like they belonged to the same character for the same amount of time, and I think I achieved this goal. After the black wash was completed, I took my airbrush with black paint and highlighted all of the blaster marks to make them look like scorches. This was the same process I did on the helmet, and I'm really happy with how it turned out on both. After that, clips were added to the back of the chest armor and the diamond was attached with hot glue.
and I couldn't be more happy with the final result. This looks like a cohesive character that would make sense in the Star Wars universe, and every part looks like it's shared a backstory. The, the weathering all matches up, I think the paint turned out great, and this was a really fun project, even with the crazy paint reactions I had. So I hope you learned something from watching this, um, I hope you can try some of these techniques, and I hope you can build yourself a custom Mando like this. Thanks for watching.